never to join Spirit to spirit Lighted by your word Father to joy, spirit to spirit, lighted by your word, and with your bread of life, that's how I come alive, that's how I change my world. Father to joy, from your spirit to my spirit. I am lighted by your word And with your breath of life That's how I come alive That's how I change my world Just breathe your name upon me Breathe Just breathe your name upon me Yod hey, wa hey is your name. Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Say, Father, to joy. Praise the Lord. You are welcome to the presence of the Lord again. I believe the Lord is going to bless us together as we pray, as we look into the word of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Father, we commit this moment into your hands. We ask that the heavens be opened upon our lives in the name of Jesus. Bless us together this hour. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Dealing with hidden and unbroken causes. Hidden and unbroken causes. These are causes that you don't know they are there, but they are there. Because you don't know they are there, you never bothered, even as a child of God, to do anything about them. And because you have not done anything about them, you continue to live with the effect of these causes. We're going to read two scriptures to see examples of hidden and unbroken causes. Joshua chapter 6, verse 26. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Caused be the man before the Lord that riseth up and be this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set the gates of it. For Samuel. First Samuel chapter 2, let's read from verse 31. Behold, the days come that I will call off, cut off thy ham and the ham of thy father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thy house. And as I see an enemy in my habitation, in all the wherewith God shall give Israel, and there shall not be an old man in the house forever. And the man of thine, whom I shall not cut off from my altar, shall be to consume thy eyes 
and to grieve thy heart and all the increase of thy house shall die in the flower of their age and this shall be a sign unto them that shall come up upon thy two sons Ovenin and Phineas in one day they shall die both of them and I will raise up I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind and I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before my anoint, anointed forever verse 36 which is the last verse and it shall come to pass and everyone that is left in thy house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and shall say put me I pray thee in one of the priest offices that I may eat a piece of bread amen what is a cause a cause is a negative word spoken into a life for evil the evil may bring an injury may bring a destruction may bring poverty may bring stagnation may bring death you see a lot of people are living under hidden and unbroken causes and hidden causes are really sure sources of many problems in life today some people may call these hidden causes generational cause cause that have been there from generation to generation probably before people that are living today were born they never knew anything about it but the cause has been pronounced upon the family some of these causes may come from enemy that look like friend people that you are dealing with as friends but behind you behind your back they are actually your enemy they deal with you in the open as friends but behind they deal with you as enemies and they pronounce evil word on you you see this hidden cause it may not be a big or a long sentence or a long word an example is you will not do well it's already a cause and at that point if you don't reverse it if you don't reject it the spirit that works with it will make sure that it sticks into your life and accomplices its effect so a cost may just be a word like that you won't do well you won't do well you see causes have a lot of characteristics i will give you three characteristics of a cause number one causes last long they have long lasting effects they have long lasting effect joshua chapter 6 verse 26 that we read joshua pronounced a curse on jericho and generations that were living at that time they might have heard of the curse and they passed generations that came they didn't know about the cause and in the book of first king chapter 16 first king chapter 16 if you look at verse 34 if you go into bible history you find that this man took this step about more than 500 years after the cause on Jericho, I mean, on the course was placed on Jericho. It's about five, between 500 and 600 years. In 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 34, in his days, did Eel, the Bethelite, build Jericho. He laid the foundation thereof in Abiram, his first son, and set up the gates thereof in his youngest son Segub, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Joshua the son of Nun when did Joshua speak the word about 600 years before this time and the cause still took effect causes 
have long lasting effect causes don't die because as a spirit that makes sure that the cause does not die that's a spirit that works that makes sure that every cause that is pronounced on a man takes its effect if it is not reversed look at another example second king chapter 2 second king chapter 2 look at verse 18 and when they came again to him that was prophet elisha now for he tarried at jericho he said unto them did i not say unto you go not and the men of the city said unto elisha behold i pray thee the situation of this city is pleasant as my lord said but the word the water is not and the ground is barren the same jericho that joshua caused the same jericho the water became poisonous and the ground was barren during the time of elisha that's hundreds of years beyond 600 years after joshua caused jericho the ground still remain barren and the water still remain poisonous. Causes have long lasting effect. Causes don't die. They don't die until they accomplish the purpose why they are sent. If the cause is not reversed. In Lamentation chapter 5 Lamentation chapter 5 Look at verse 7. Lamentation chapter 5 verse 7. Our fathers have sinned and are not and we are born their iniquities. Their fathers committed iniquity. God put a cause on them and generations after them began to bear the effect of the cause upon the fathers. So, you should take it today. There are many things that are happening to us that as a result of a negative pronouncement over our lives. The pronouncement may not be directly on us, but along our family line. So, long-lasting effect of causes. Number two, the effect of causes can be catastrophic. Can be catastrophic. I'll just give one example. For Samuel chapter 2 that we read verse 31. Behold the days come that I will cut off thy ham and the arm of thy father's house and there shall not be an old man in thy house. If you look at the same first Samuel chapter 4, look at verse 11. Verse 11. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phineas, were slain, according to the cause. It can be very catastrophic. How terrible is it that children of the same parents dying the same day because of the father god has placed a cause on the family the affair can be catastrophic the affair can be destructive and i pray upon your life today that as you are listening to me the lord will begin to reveal to you effect of causes in your life things that are happening to you that are not there as a result of what you have done wrong, but as a result of what somebody else has grown, probably along your family line, in the name of Jesus. Number three, causes act as a fence. He act as a fence. You know, you build fences around the house, around premises, around properties to fend off intruders. The same thing, a cause protects evil spirits. Give a legal grant 
for spirits to operate in people's life give a legal grant for evil spirit to operate in people's life it prevents men and women from reaching their expected height because it gives the devil strength opportunity to attack and to operate in people's life what do you think happened to Jabez in the book of false chronicle what do you think and it's not only Jabez he's all his brethren all his brothers all the members of his family were experiencing the same thing because something has been pronounced along their family line generational cause and they were all suffering until he came to Jabez God opened his eyes I pray for you that in the name of Jesus the Lord will open your eyes your spiritual eye of understanding to see that some things that are happening to you are not supposed to be happening to you just like as Jabez did you will take your stand and fight Jabez fought and God turned his captivity around so these are three things long lasting effect when a cause is pronounced he doesn't die he stays until he accomplishes his effect if it is not reversed the effect of a cause can be very catastrophic and the cause acts like a fence it prevents I mean it protects evil spirit from acting in our life so what are some things that attracts let's talk to ourselves now what are some things that we do that attract causes I just go through them briefly number one sexual sin it is written in the scripture there are causes pronounced on sexual sin you read the book of numbers you read Leviticus there are causes pronounced on sexual sin any sexual sin attract a cause it may be insects it may be t sleeping with somebody's father's wife your father wife you remember the story of Reuben speak uh, sleeping with having sexual contact with your blood relation and so on and so in the position in your position where God has placed you position of authority in your office as a leader in the office your actions some of your actions attract the cause of God when you begin to cheat people when you begin to take people's property when you begin to steal government money it attracts the cause of God shedding innocent blood shedding innocent blood young ladies that terminate pregnancies young ladies that are pros prosmicious and begin to terminate pregnancy the blood of that baby or those babies you have terminated will continue to rise against you you remember the story of Cain and Nabal? The blood of Abel rose from the ground and cried for vengeance upon Cain and God put a curse. So, shedding innocent blood attracts kidnapping, attracts, you know, curses. Buying stolen property. And that's why we have to be very careful. There are some things we buy that are stolen. The sweat of that man that owns the thing that you are buying. You are not the one who stole it, but you are buying it. That's why we have to be very, very careful what we buy, where we buy them, so that we will not attract causes into our life. And let me say one more. Abusing men and women of God, you are attracting a curse upon your life. You are attracting a cause upon your life. There are many other things that we do that we attract causes. But sexual sin, your action, your activity, your place of authority, to shed innocent blood, buying stolen things, and abusing men and women of God, we attract causes. So what are the signs of causes? There are many signs of causes. We have seen great example in Jericho we have seen the example that the man who decided to rebuild Jericho 
the first son and the last son died. So there are many, many, you know, visible signs in one's life when you are working under a course. Number one is invisible barriers. You just find that you continue to face barriers in life. You just find that anything you do, there is no progress. Either the law is changed when it is your time to be blessed, or you find that an obstacle is erected ahead of you when you are supposed to make a breakthrough. Invisible barriers. Barriers that you don't see. You just find that these are barriers. You just find that this thing is just not allowing you to make progress in life. Invisible barriers. You may be accident prone. Anything you do, accident. Maybe vehicle accident. Maybe domestic accident. It may be accident in your place of work. You just find that you are accident prone. Something that is not supposed to lead to an accident. You just find yourself, you are accident prone. You keep breaking plates in the house. You keep breaking cups in the house. You keep breaking your property. Check your life. Check your life. You may be working under a cause, a destructive cause. Also, diseases. There are diseases that, you know, doctors find difficult to find the root and to cure or to manage because he's there as a result of a cause. I've seen a man who became epileptic as a result of the cause pronounced on him because of his activity. He used to plever, he used to go to people's property to steal and they put a cause upon him and he became epileptic. There was no history of epilepsy in his life, but he became the first person in the family because they put a curse upon his life. And I'm sure you remember the story of Gaius. The man of God placed a curse upon his life and he became leprous. And he said, your seeds, generations after him, became lepers, leprosy, diseases, failure. You just find yourself failing at the point of success. When you are not supposed to fail, you just find yourself you are failing. You just find things difficult at the point of success. It may be as a result of a cause. Somebody has placed a cause on you. Somebody has put a ceiling. The cause becomes like a ceiling over your head. Before you get to the ceiling, you are doing well. But immediately you get to that ceiling, that line they are put upon your head, you begin to fail. Death. Is another thing. Dying at the prime of your life. I've seen people that in their family they don't go beyond 40. I've met a man who said anybody who married from my wife's family dies at the age of 40. And he mentioned the first one, he mentioned the second one, and he said, I'm the next one. In two weeks' time, I will be 40. And I'm having premonition. I'm having signs as if though. It's my time to die. It means such a family that's a cause that has been pronounced cause of death, that they will not go beyond the age of 40. And it, the man gave two examples. He was the third one. So death. So there are many signs. You know that things are not working well in your life. You are not making progress. You are not making progress. You have good certificates. I've seen a man that had a first class certificate, but he couldn't get a job with the first class. In those days, when certificates in, uh, in his, in his uh, profession was very rare. In the 70s, how many people had certificate in uh, accounting? And this man was, I met him and he was so wretched. This was a man with a certificate in accounting. And I told the man, you are working on that course. Until that course is broken. You continue, continue to work like this in life. Are you working under a cause? Dealing with eating and unbroken causes. Causes that are there. You don't know they are there. But you are finding the effect in your life. You are not doing well. Things are not working for you. So, what is the solution? What is the solution? The first thing is for you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your savior because it is Christ that has redeemed us from the curse of the law 
Christ redeemed us. He bought us. He released us from the cause of the Lord. So that's the first thing. Stop running around. A lot of people, when they are not doing well, they begin to run around, etter scatter. The only man that can deliver you is Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Is Jesus Christ. He was hung on the tree so as to deliver us from the cause of the law. Whatever law is working against your life, Jesus Christ came to deliver you. That's the first thing. Number two, you must release yourself from the unrighteousness of your forebear. You must release yourself. You see, many of us, we say we are Christians. Many of us, we say we believe in the Lord Jesus. But we have not released ourselves from the unrighteousness of our forebear. We see, we are still doing what our forebears, what they did, that didn't pay them. We are still sitting and living in the tent of our forebears. And as long as you keep living in the tent of your forebear, you continue to have the same result. In Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 4, as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not caught. Neither was thou was in water to supple thee. Thou was not sorted at all, nor swandu. This was the reason why all the problem was happening to the beloved of God. He said, the scripture says, you must cut the neighbor that has attached you to the unrighteousness of your phobia. Cut the neighbor. That thing that is attaching you to your phobia, cut it off. Cut it off. You need to cut it off. There are things that your phobia, your parents did that actually attracted causes into their life. And you are still living in the same tent. There is no way you can go free. You need to cut the neighbor off. Then number three, you must renounce all unrighteousness. You see, God, God pronounced curses on people for their disobedience. Stop living in disobedience. The curse of God on Eli or the children of Israel or anybody, read the scripture, is as a result of disobedience. Stop living in disobedience. Stop living in disobedience. Stop living in disobedience. Renounce anything that you have to do with the devil. Renounce it. You empower the devil. You empower the cause by working with the devil. You empower the cause. You see, there are many people that can pronounce a cause upon our life. Anybody that has rational authority on you, like your parents, like your husband, like your master, if you're an apprentice, like a teacher, they can pronounce a curse upon you. So, the scripture says you must obey your parents in the Lord. Obey them. Obey them. Renounce any act of disobedience if you want to live a free life. And then probably finally, you must restitute anything you have unjustly taken, anything you have stolen, restitute. The Lord will grant you grace how to restitute. I won't teach you how to restitute. But ask the Lord to teach you how to restitute. If there's something in your pocket, something in your life, something in your house that you know does not belong to you, it is stolen, you are living under a cause. Try and restitute. And if you restitute, I'm sure you will dismember the spirit that are working in your life. And then you will be able to boldly come unto the Lord and ask the Lord for progress in your life. Are you ready to do that? Are you ready to renounce? Are you ready to confess the Lordship of Jesus Christ over your life? If you are ready to confess the Lordship of Jesus over your life, the Bible says a costless cause cannot stand. If the devil does not have anything in your life that will make him to hold you, the cause cannot stand. The causes that have even been pronounced along your family line, you can today reverse and cancel them if you will allow Jesus Christ to take over your life. 
And all if you restitute, if you give off anything that you have unjustly taken, the Lord is going to rescue. The Lord is going to wash you clean. Dealing with eating and unbroken causes. I declare upon your life today, every eating cause that have tied you down, that has stagnated your destiny, your progress in life, let them be revealed. Let them be terminated. Let them be broken in the name of Jesus. I want to lead you in a few prayer points. I want you to begin to just thank God today that your eyes have been opened to see that you can deal with eating and unbroken causes. Thank the Lord that you can deal with eating and unbroken causes in your life. Thank the Lord in the name of Jesus. Thank the Lord. And now call and accept the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Confess the Lordship of Jesus over your life. Ask the Lord Jesus to take over your life. Ask the Lord Jesus to take over your life. Detach yourself. Cut yourself. Detach yourself from the unrighteousness of your phobia. Unrighteousness of generations before you. Generations along your family line. Detach yourself in the name of Jesus. And now begin to revoke every cause working in your life. Every cause working in your life. Whether they are generational cause, whether they are self imposed cause, whether they are cause that are put upon you by anybody, begin to revoke them in the name of Jesus. Revoke them in the name of Jesus. Revoke them. And now begin to close the door. Close the door. Close every door that these causes have come to enter into your life. Close the door in the name of Jesus. Close the door. Close the door in the name of Jesus. And command the demons, the spirit that are working with these causes. Is it affliction in your life? Is it stagnation in your life? Is it disease in your life? Is it poverty in your life? Begin to close the door. I close the door to stagnation. I close the door to diseases. I close the door to affliction. In the name of Jesus, begin to close the door. Begin to close the door and command this spirit out of your life in the name of Jesus. Dry them. Say in the name of Jesus, I command the spirit that are coming to my life by the reason of the causes that have been revoked and cancelled. I command them out of my life in the name of Jesus. Mention them one by one. Whatever is happening in your life, mention them one by one. And now begin to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. Find you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, I pray for your people. That in the name that is above every name, Jesus Christ. Every cause that is operating in their life. Because they have given their lives unto the Lord Jesus. They have confessed the Lordship of Jesus over their life. I command those causes terminated in the name of Jesus. I command those causes terminated in the name of Jesus. Ajabes cried unto you. And you heard his cry. Lord, let the cry of your elect, your children be heard today in the name of Jesus. In their lives are there sickness, affliction, diseases, stagnation, poverty that are be, were attracted by the reason of causes that have been revoked. I command those spirits to live their life now in the name of Jesus. Wherever those causes have affected in your life, by the authority of the name of Jesus, I command restoration. You are restored in the name of Jesus. You are restored. Disease, affliction, sickness, I cut you to your root in the name of Jesus. And I declare your life a no-go area again as from today in the name of Jesus. Because whosoever the sense has set free is free indeed. I declare you are free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. The Lord bless you. Take home today. Even if there are eating and unbroken causes in your life, you can break them. You can break. They can be broken. And it is important that you detach yourself from the unrighteousness of your parents 
and hold on unto the Lord Jesus Christ because it is Christ that redeemed us from the cause of the law. So rise up in the name of Jesus. Don't accept whatever the devil says is giving you because you are being redeemed by the blood of Jesus. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.